Namaste, beautiful yogis. Uh, I got a question by Amy about, uh, I mentioned that one of my favorite, or one of my top five uh, exercises is deadlifts. Indeed, for years and years, I've been, uh, this is one of my, I would say my favorite exercise, but there is one other that is a little more important than deadlifts as far as I'm concerned. Deadlift would make the list as a top two. And the other four exercises, I'll do it in a countdown way. Um, my um, top five would be some form of a push, chaturanga or a push up. I'm just doing exercises, I will do a separate video for my top five favorite yoga poses. That is a whole nother story. Uh, as far as uh, just body weight exercises or with a little equipment or a little weight added, I keep things extremely simple. If I cannot travel with it, or if I can't uh, do it uh, pretty much just requiring my body weight, I will not do it because it, to me it seems too complicated. I want to simplify things. Because um, I know I'm getting actually better results for myself when I keep things short and simple and I'm just kind to my body. Uh, top five would be some form of a push. Not that it's less important that, than the other four, but just I have a special love for deadlifts and the other ones. So it's going to be a form of chaturanga or some form of a push-up. Just something like that. Uh, that would be, uh, that is a must, of course, in any uh, routine, health routine that requires strength, which is every routine. Then, top four would be some form of a knee tuck or a knee lift. I don't like crunches as much, actually, when I was studying um, conscious body movement they do if you think about it when you crunch your body this is uh, this is how we respond to fear so basically we could be potentially invoking fear in our body when we crunch like this so I prefer any lifts or planks uh, such things just so that I'm working on my core in a more holistic or in a more um, empowering way so top four would be some form of a knee lift I can use a, a, a hanging pull-up bar or one of those and lift. I don't do them too often, but they are pretty beneficial. And you can do them in many ways. You can lift the legs straight with the controlled lowering of the legs. You can open and you can bring your knees in. You can even do it in a crunch type of way where you are rounding and pulling the belly in. And of course, you can do side inside <clears throat> the next exercise or is, this is replaceable with uh, say elevated knee tucks or knee tucks together and you can do it in a handstand way lifting and bringing in, holding and back to straight line. Okay, so that's to top four. Top three would be just because I'm cautious about knees and keeping the knees healthy, I prefer over the other uh, knee strengthening exercises and presses and such, I prefer jump lunges. They do train your legs one at a time. It's a bit of a single form workout and they're gentler on your knees if you are keeping your form, correct form. So I do like jump lunges where you do keep the front knee over your ankle or behind your ankle and never overlapping. You do need flexibility in your quadriceps and hip flexor to perform it correctly. But given you work on your flexibility, you can get to perform jump lunges correctly. And even though there is an impact, if you don't have an injury at the moment or inflammation, they, te they tend to be gentler on your knees than, say, weighted exercises, which can put a lot of strain on your knees, especially for women, because naturally we do have that alignment where the knee where the femur bone goes out because we have wider hips. So I prefer even 
stepping into lunge again same thing you have to align over the other leg strengthening exercises and this tends to build a really nice and lean muscle which is what most of us want anyways rather than thick and bulky legs of course if you're a bodybuilder you're gonna have to add weight and do presses and such uh, that was number three number two as we know is my uh, it's deadlift I love deadlift and that would be my number one from the exercises but it has to be number two uh, I prefer single legged of course again single leg exercises are always in my book better than anything with two legs you you train your um, nervous system and you train your body to perform things by balancing and training the nervous system on both sides equally so that if you have misalignment, say you're having misalignment in your cis, in your body, when you do two-legged weighted squats, for example, you are going to uh, favor the strong side in your body and you're going to misalign more on one side, but when you're doing a one-legged uh, exercise, say a cross lunge, you are going to just use that front leg because we're doing a single-legged, so it's better in uh, training your body to develop strength equally. Uh, so I do like, I do perform a double leg uh, deadlift, but not as often as the single legged one, which is also safer for your lower back. So always keep your knees soft, never hyperextend your knees, and you can lower down straight back, keeping the curve and come back up. You can keep your legs straight, of course, without locking, or you can bend your legs and touch back, however, however you want to perform it. I uh, generally go for one legged, single legged, and I keep my hips square. So, keep square, if, uh, to know how your, if your hips are square, when you extend your back leg, make sure that your toes are all fa facing equally the floor. So basically, if your toes, if your pinky is opening, then you know that your hip is opening. You're going to close your toes, which is going to rotate your outer thigh down and your inner thigh up. And you're just going to keep this way your hip square, making sure your belly is in and your chest is open. And you're elongating the spine through the crown of the head and you're going to lower down again, you can bend your knee but you don't have to and come back up with a square hip or you can do it with a straight leg which requires a lot of flexibility so it's not really possible for everybody and I'll do it on the other side again making sure you can flex your foot and point the toes down with the foot that's flexing Going down with the straight leg, much more difficult as far as flexibility goes. I generally bend the knee, lower down, come back up, keep the hip square. That's number, that is number two. And number one, it is a double legged exercise. And it's one that you can only do if you're fit. Um, and if you don't have a present injury, but done correctly, it can actually strengthen your joints. I do believe in impact exercises, small impact. If done correctly, it can strengthen your joints over time. I don't believe that impact will ruin your joints. On the contrary, long time runners, say over 30, 40 years, that use low impact running, can have really strong knees if they use proper form. Unfortunately, most people don't run correctly. And anyways, you do have to develop all the other muscles in your body equally so just running I don't consider to be enough and it's not enough but it's not going to damage the impact is not going to damage your joints if you do it correctly most people do get injuries from running and if you look out when you're out on your walks you will see a lot of people running will be running with knee wraps or knee braces uh, and still running obviously they're using wrong form and it might be even their anatomy not completely, completely uh, fit for running, but you know, they continue running. So I prefer something that will take me uh, six times less, six times 
less time and I will get the job done and I will strengthen my legs and get cardio. Squat jumps. You can start with just small ones, small hops, which will strengthen your knees given you have no knee pain at all. Don't ever do anything if you have if you are feeling pain while you are performing it. And then you're going to go down, make sure your knees don't buckle and make sure you um, are pressing your knees back. You can go just to parallel to the floor, keeping the back straight and pressing the knees back. And come up with a small hop. At first you don't have to hop. And once, once you feel strong enough, you can point even the toes out. Touch the floor and come up, touch the floor, come up, touch the floor, come up. That will build your quadriceps, your glutes. It's a really one of the exercises that can make you overall increase your strength. Um, one exercise I didn't include in the top five that is good to include is a, some form of a pull, um, like a pull up, a pull up on a, a, a pull up here, or it can be done with weights. You will need, you will need either a pull up bar, a stay dip station, or weights to pull. So basically, you can pull with weights, some form of a pull, because we did a push and a pull is usually good to balance the push. Now, a few people asked about knee pain. If you have knee pain, of course you can't do the jumps yet. You can build up to that. But uh, uh, one exercise that will strengthen your knees is wall sits. I recommend it to everybody. You're gonna come onto a wall and you're gonna place your back onto the wall, lower back presses into the wall. You're gonna keep your knees hip width apart toes pointing directly forward and you will stay here up until you're starting to strengthen the muscles that are supporting your knees. Um, once you feel this is not challenging enough but you have already felt that you have built leg strength, you can take one leg off the floor, continue with that alignment, press the back in, hold. If you hold this for 60 seconds, most of us are going to get a workout from it. That will strengthen the knees without putting extra weight on the knees. Make sure again that when you sit back, your knees are either above your ankle or slightly behind. So step your feet further out. Um, I think that's, that's about it. It was really my top six exercises. Um, let me know if you have any questions. I will next, I will post my top five yoga poses. Uh, for health and strength and flexibility. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Namaste. <laughs> <laughs> Sophie. <laughs>